when you're talking to, you know, a new Belgium, like that's a massive brand that's been around for a super long time. Like, how do you approach a project like that? Like, what are, what do you walk into that thinking? And maybe like the more of these projects you've done, what are some things you've learned about the process that might be helpful to someone who would walk into that? Well, I think like one thing that's good for any project would be having them genuinely interested in you because they think that you're good at what you do. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, there's just like nice thing that happens where someone walks up to you and you're like, Hey, I think you're cute. Do you want to go on a date? It's like this fun, like I have value to them and they like what I'm making mm -hmm. as a foundation. And that part's like, just that's so helpful, man. Yeah. And New Belgium is like the perfect brand to partner with because they're, a, they're, they're both like, a multinational distributed beer company with like labels underneath them and sister brands and whatever, but their internal decision-making team is very small. Mm. So there's just not a lot of people who need to sign off on something. And there's a lot of like trust and That's autonomy cool. between the people. And, and I'm, I'm maybe I'm projecting too much, but it just, it didn't take that much for me to get my ideas sold in. They were just like, That's we cool. trust that you're making something and whatever. So working with them is just like, it was. It was mostly just a fun, easy process. So I would say most of the brands that I'm designing with now, it's kind of that type of relationship. The person who is, is hiring me also can sign off on it. And there's just not a lot of people in the room that need to sign off on stuff. Mm -hmm. And that gets really helpful. And then having some reputation that people like what you're making already, it's just like, right. they're hiring you the for a work. reason because they know yeah. what you're going to bring to the table. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I think like a lot of agencies or even, or if you're new to freelance or whatever, you have to sell, you know? So you're like, in an agency world, you might have a business development guy who's like, we're offering all these services and you got to pick us. And like, right. your portfolio is good, but like, why are they picking you over their agency of record or any other agency? Like that, like that thing, or that sales tool, I don't have to do it as much sure. because I don't, one, I don't have the overhead, so I don't need the like. Uh, we got to bring in 200 grand this month. You know, right. like, I just don't have that kind of pressure. And two, I think I do a very specific type of, like, I just work on the front end visuals brand stuff. I don't have this whole apparatus inside of here that needs to do digital marketing, yeah. ad spend, media buys, all this other stuff right. that like agencies might offer. Right. So it one, it's one part of our relationships, just getting to know people mm. and getting to like people and knowing who can hire you and, and who has a budget spend. The, that's a very specific like band of people in a, in an organization, getting to know those people. Well, that that's the thing that kind of will pay you dividends. Yeah. So I think like young freelancers will always be like, you know, I always hear this dumb ass advice from people where they're just like, you should post more on Instagram. And I'm like, I don't know what people are saying. Like that's a billboard <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. That's like, that's, you put up a picket sign and that's great. And you hope that people drove by it, but like, mm. that's not a great, that's not a great business development tool. Like just relationships, meeting people mm. who've, who have budgets, like getting in contact with them directly, showing them exactly what you do, taking your time, not being too you know, in their face right. about trying to hire you, but posting more on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, those things are fun. You'll get some validation there, but sure. unless you feel like you can scale to 10,000 followers or 20,000 followers or something like that, you're not going to see a return. Right. So if you need to make money tomorrow, like I would just tell you get in touch with people who have budgets. Yes. Sell to those people. Like I'm so glad you said that. I, I feel like that's such a misconception. Like for when I got started with my, you know, we moved out to New York, my wife, was holding it down financially for us. She had like, you know, a job and I was going freelance for the first time during that period. And I remember, th you know, hearing similar things. Like if you're going out freelance, like you need to post, you have to have all the social media presence and all this stuff. And I tried it for a minute and nothing really changed. But what really started changing is when I started cold emailing people who needed help who clearly had a need for what I was good at, which was editing podcasts and producing podcasts. Like I would literally, if I listened to a podcast and it didn't sound good, I would just write that person an email, say, Hey, pay me 50 bucks for this episode and I'll make it sound good for you. That's how I was able to do that. And it's so, but no one really talks about that because it's so unsexy to be like, yeah, you have to go send a hundred cold emails. <laughs> like, oh, or whatever. Man, like, yeah, that being too, I feel like you're preaching my, you're preaching my message, man. And that's what I tell folks, you know, I mean, that's what's worked for me. Like yeah. it's just relationships, you know, cold emails, explaining exactly what you do in a very short way, you know, and yeah. how to get in contact with you. That's great. I mean, I think there is a salesy tool to that, which is like making it not convoluted what you do. Like, yes. 
how easily you can help somebody just saying, Hey, I can make your audio a lot better. Like just, you know, I'll do it for 500 bucks or whatever, or, yeah. you know, like, and okay, cool. We'll just hand you the audio file. You tweak it, whatever you give some advice. Cool. You're hired move on to the next one. It's like in college and high school, I would hang these door hangers that were like for pizza and for restaurants and stuff. And like, that's like, it, that works great because like you, you went to them you made it obvious the service that you're offering. It's like very blue collar. It's mm -hmm. great. Like people yeah. need design services. Like you just need to find who those people are. So I think like, mm. it's cool to get likes on whatever thing you posted on the internet, but like, ultimately I don't think that pays as many, especially if it's small fo following, it doesn't pay as many dividends as like, you know, just knowing somebody who has a budget. <laughs> yeah, for sure.